Ghana has, since independence, carved a niche for herself in a number of ways. After breaking free from colonialism, Ghana's first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, became also the torchbearer in his struggle for the total liberation of the entire African continent. Our independence is meaningless unless it lifts up the total liberation of the African continent. Ghana, we now have freedom. The idea of a united Africa was born in Accra when a number of African leaders met in the Ghanaian capital. With inspiration from Dr. Nkrumah and others, the Organization of African Unity, OAU, was formed in 1963 in the Ethiopian capital Addis Ababa. The precursor to what is now the African Union, the AU, established on July 9, 2002 in South Africa. Ghana's role in the continent's forward march has been key. Ghana was also a founding member of the non-aligned movement NAM, a member of the African, Caribbean and Pacific Group of States, ACP, and has lived up to their ideals. The formation of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, was another step in and building economic and political cooperation and peace in West Africa. Here too, Ghana has been a leader through the decades since ECOWAS was established in 1975. Under the chairmanship of Presidents Jerry Rawlins and John Kufo, and with Dr. Mohamed Ibn Chambas, a Ghanaian, as Secretary General of ECOWAS in the late 90s and 2000s, Ghana's role was key in bringing stability, peace and democracy to Sierra Leone and Liberia after years of chaos and bloodshed. Dr. Chambas has since gone on to head the ACP Group of States, headquartered in Brussels, served as the UN's Secretary General's representative in Darfur, and now as the representative for West Africa and the Sahel. At both the ACP and ECOWAS, Ghanaians Alhaji Mohamed Mumuni and Ambassador Victor Beho became successes after Dr. Chambers. Indeed, Ghana occupies a respectable place in global peace and security. Ghana joined the United Nations on March 8 in 1957, two days after independence. Since then, Ghana has contributed more than 80,000 military and police personnel for UN peacekeeping duties over 30 missions around the world, starting with the Congo in 1960. When civil war broke out in Rwanda in 1994, the UN, under the OAU brokered Arusha Agreement, created the United Nations Assistance Mission in Rwanda, UNAMIR, to provide security for the smooth implementation of the accord. Ghana contributed more than half of the 5,200 troops that served in Rwanda. When all the countries serving in the operation, Belgium, Tunisia and Bangladesh withdrew their troops at the onset of the genocide, the Ghanaian soldiers stayed. A Ghanaian, General Henry Anidoho, was Deputy Force Commander and Chief of Staff of UNAMIR. General Anidoho also served in international peacekeeping operations in Lebanon, Liberia, Cambodia and Darfur. Ghanaian soldiers have served with distinction in Sierra Leone, Liberia, East Timor, Angola, Côte d'Ivoire and continue to serve in Somalia, Lebanon, Sudan, Central African Republic, the Gambia and Mali. Indeed, the first commander of the UN Interim Force in Lebanon, UNIFIL, when it was established in 1978, was General Emmanuel Erskine, who served for three years. In 1999, the UN appointed another Ghanaian, Lieutenant General Seth Obing, to the position. Ghana's involvement in peacekeeping operations across the world led to the establishment in 1998 of the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center at Teshi in Accra. It was named after former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan and has trained thousands in peace operations and peacekeeping. I, Kofi Annan, solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. In December 1996, the late Kofi Annan became the seventh Secretary General of the World Body. Before then, Mr. Annan had served as UN Under Secretary General for Peacekeeping Operations. It was under his tenure that UN peacekeeping operations grew in size and scope 
with a total deployment of almost 70,000 military and civilian personnel from 77 countries. One of Mr. Anand's legacies to Africa and the world was the introduction in 2005 of responsibility to protect, a global principle under which external powers could intervene in the internal affairs of other countries to prevent genocide, war crimes, ethnic cleansing and crimes against humanity. Other illustrious Ghanaian diplomats who have unfurled Ghana's flag in the international arena include Dr. Alex Kwesin Saki, the first diplomat from a black African nation to serve as president of the UN General Assembly. Another Ghanaian achievement in world peace is the effort of Nane Kufwado, then Ghana's foreign minister under the Kufo administration. Nana Kufwado, now Ghana's president, chaired a high-level Security Council meeting in August 2006 that took the decision to halt Israel's incursions in Lebanon. Given that the Security Council is one of the highest organs of the UN, and also that the decision to elect Nane Kufwado to chair a Security Council session did not attract any dissenting voices, speaks volumes of Ghana's image as promoter of international peace and security. Mrs. Mary Chinri Hesse was the first African woman resident coordinator of the United Nations system and resident representative of the UNDP to many countries including Sierra Leone, Tanzania, the Seychelles and Uganda. Dr. Robert Kwekwata Gardner and Dr. K.Y. Amwakon both served as the executive secretaries of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. Ambassador Kenneth Darcy was the Secretary General of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNCTAD, between 1986 and 1994. Ambassador Kwesi Kwoti, a career diplomat and former Deputy Foreign Minister, is currently Deputy Chairman of the AU Commission. Ms. Hannah Tete is now Director General of the United Nations Office in Nairobi, Kenya. Ambassador K.B. Asante was one of the 10 pioneer Foreign Service Officers who blazed the trail in establishing Ghana's foreign policy credentials and ensured that the civil service machinery worked efficiently to support the political leaders. In 1979, Mrs. Gloria Nikoi became the first female foreign minister. She was appointed by military head of state General Ignatius Kutue Champong who curiously never traveled outside Ghana in his six years in office except for a day's trip to neighboring Togo. The visit was only announced on the evening news after his safe return home. <laughs> Ghana's heads of state in the Fourth Republic have consolidated the nation's cardinal foreign policy of good neighborliness and regional leadership. Between 1992 and 2000, Former President Rawlings served for two terms as chairman of ECOWAS in the heat of the Liberian Civil War and played a notable role in peace efforts in then war-torn Liberia, which led to the end of the crisis that claimed about 250,000 lives and displaced millions. He was also ECOWAS chairman for two terms and saw to the successful negotiations that brought peace and post-war reconstruction to Sierra Leone Côte d'Ivoire and Liberia. Both Mrs. Ellen Johnson Sirleaf and her successor, Mr. George Oponwea, conferred upon former President J. A. Kufo, Liberia's highest state honor. In 2007, violence broke out in Kenya following disputed elections. Hundreds were killed in a mayhem that threatened to destabilize the East African country and the sub-region. It took the wisdom of President Kofo, chairman of the African Union at the time, to appoint Kofi Annan, who had then retired as Secretary General of the UN, to intervene and mediate for a government of national unity and pull Kenya from an otherwise apocalyptic brink. As ECOWAS chairman in 2014, President Mahama worked to restore democratic order in Burkina Faso after long-term leader Bles Kampari was ousted following 27 days of civil unrest. President John Mahama was part of a delegation 
led by the then ECOWAS chairperson, President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf of Liberia, to meet with and persuade President Yahya Jame to hand power over to Mr. Adama Barrow. President Akufuado assumed office when a looming political crisis in the Gambia was at its peak. The tension was due to President Jame's reluctance to hand over power to the president-elect. President Akufuado deployed Ghanaian troops to ensure a smooth and peaceful transfer of power in the Gambia. He and President Mahama deployed some of Ghana's best legal brains and maritime specialists and leveraged their own diplomatic skills to resolve a major maritime dispute over oil-rich waters with neighboring Cote d'Ivoire to the mutual satisfaction of the two countries following their acceptance of a ruling by the International Tribunal of the Law of the Sea. President Akufuado was also commended at the 54th ECOWAS Ordinary Session in December 2018 for his policy proposals aimed at building trust and confidence amongst political actors in Togo, where the government and opposition parties are jostling for power. Since September 2017, President Akufuado has made various attempts to restore peace in the former French colony. Since 2001, Ghana has adopted economic diplomacy as the main plank of her international relations. This involves using a range of diplomatic activities and tools to influence investment, trade, aid and other economic outcomes for Ghana's benefit. Ghana became a beacon since independence for people of African descent and civil rights leaders globally. Inspired by Dr Nkrumah's Pan-Africanist ideas, many historical figures made what they considered to be a pilgrimage to Ghana. Among them, Dr. Martin Luther King and his wife, Coretta Scott King, Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, and trumpeter Louis Armstrong. Ghana also provided support for the liberation struggles of other colonies to catalyze their own liberation. Ghana became a home for exiled African liberation fighters from all over the continent, particularly Southern Africa. Even today, Ghana continues to attract inspirational figures from the African diaspora, as evidenced by a group of celebrities from the US, Britain, and the Caribbean who chose to spend Christmas in Ghana in 2018. At the bilateral level, Ghana has hosted leaders from across the globe. In 1961, President Kwame Nkrumah received the then Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth, just a year after Ghana became a republic. In November 1999, the Queen returned and was hosted by President Rawlings. In March 1998, President Bill Clinton of the United States paid a historic visit to Ghana. What Akwaba really means, thank you, thank you so much. In January 2008, President J. E. Kufour received U.S. President George Walker Bush. President Bush's successor, Barack Obama, also visited Ghana in July 2009, hosted by President John Evans at a Mills. Mr. Obama was the first U.S. president to deliver a speech in Ghana's parliament. Under President Akufuado, Ghana continues to receive world leaders who recognize the country's place in the affairs of Africa and the world. Notable among them are the German Chancellor Angela Merkel, French President Emmanuel Macron, the Queen of Denmark and several European leaders, US First Lady Melania Trump, Prince Charles, the Prince of Wales, and African leaders including Nigerian President Mohamedou Buhari and Ivorian President Alassane Ouattara. The importance of Ghana's place in the world is without question. However, there is a gap that needs desperately to be filled. Despite the countless number of civil society advocacy groups, Ghana does not have a dedicated think tank on international relations. This is the void that the Council on Foreign Relations Ghana, CFR, is here to rectify. We'll be concerned with foreign policy formulation and implementation in Ghana, but naturally, that involves ECOWAS, that involves the AU, that involves the international space, because Africa's engagement with the international world has been 
uh, impacted by events which were not controlled by Africa. I mean, colonialism, Cold War, globalization. So Africa's response to its engagement with the international community to make Africa have a prominent voice is part of our, our, our aim. Talking about what the council stands for, many questions on the implementation of the country's policy and events across the continent have been left unanswered. We're also interested in organizing conferences and seminars where world-renowned personalities will address matters of foreign policy and where the public, as a key actor in foreign policy formulation, can engage them. And we have big events coming up in March, April, May, June, where we'll have very high-profile personalities speaking to the public on foreign policy matters. With the coming together of diplomats, lawyers, academics, journalists, international relations and military and security experts, the Council on Foreign Relations Ghana is here to add to the depth of existing knowledge, expertly analyze events, facilitate understanding and support decision makers as they steer Ghana's relations with the rest of the global community in an ever-changing world. Long live the Council on Foreign Relations Ghana. Long live Ghana.